Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about high frequency AC. So let's dive right into it. Now, what exactly is the problem with current AC system that we have to go to high frequency? Well, reality is AC is great. That's why we use it for power transmission because stepping it up and stepping it down is super easy. Meaning it's a dumb device, meaning you don't have to think about it. And it's very efficient also. So it works. On top of that, you can make dumb motors, meaning you do not need a single piece of IC with it. Uh, that a motor, generator, both can be made into brushless and magnetless. Meaning while you can say you can do uh, brushless if you have magnets, but again, imagine trying to put magnets in a 100 megawatt generator or uh, like even, you know, 1000 horsepower motor. That magnet cost will be expensive. So having this idea, uh, you know, ecosystem where you can have a br uh, brushless magnetless system and self-starting also meaning you does not need to uh, do some fancy thing especially if you have a three-phase system it's super easy to self-start and you can also change its direction clockwise to counterclockwise without any fancy semiconductor so you, you see that there are some genuine benefits of using ac but it does have some side effects meaning whenever we want to make powerful stuff for example this is a car engine around 500 horsepower not the latest or greatest but you know good amount of oomph uh, this puppy has the same amount of oomph but if you try to put this in this the car will sink flat out sink and if it does not get crippled at first so here's the problem we can get the power output of it but we do not get the power density we need meaning we want the same kind of power 500 horsepower but we want it in a very small volume very lightweight volume and there lies the problem the current uh, utility frequency that we utilize majority of the world uses 50 hertz some places of the world uses 60 hertz they can make you very powerful motors we, there are places you can just go and buy motors that are like you know megawatt class they are used in like very expensive uh, industrial things you can buy that it's awesome it does work here's the there huge they are not power dense and if you want power density this 50 and 60 hertz is not gonna cut it that's the problem so what does physics say about it because you have to understand the first thing you may think what if you increase the voltage well that's a good thing but you have to understand there is always a limitation of dielectric strength meaning whenever you are talking about enamel wire the copper wires uh, they have coating here's the problem with that it's a very thin coating meaning it cannot stop very high voltage ideally generally below 1000 volt it can manage in the moment you start to put it you have to put a you know high density coating on it to, in order to ensure it it can survive and again there is a limit to that because electricity especially at high voltage has a tendency to make love to anything meaning it can just punch through things like air uh, like every insulation you can put on there so there is a limitation of dielectric strength can you do it yes but it will cost you a lot and on top of that your coil cannot be made uh, that efficiently because your coil literally would need a very thick coating to work and it may need to be submerged in oil in order to survive long enough so there is a voltage limitation especially if you are talking about motor or generators that's a limitation uh, so that's a physical thing that's why you cannot just like yank the voltage as much as you want and from a cost point of view generally yes we humanity has a technology to deal with 100 kV uh, volts directly we can do that. That's how HVDC unit works. But the problem is those are multi-million dollar equipments, not something you're going to put in a car. So you have to understand, we have to work inside the dielectric strength. That limits you to generally below 1000 volt, ideally below 400 volts. So that's the voltage. Okay, you can't increase the voltage. But what if you increase the amps? We have uh, what is the output of basically voltage multiplied by amps? What if I just go YOLO on the amps? Well, unless you are using superconductor, you are dealing with thermal limits of any conductor, be it copper, be it 99.9999% pure copper. You are dealing with that side effect, meaning it's gonna melt. So that limits both of the factors, meaning you cannot increase the voltage, nor you, you can increase the basically amps. So are you locked? No. In, especially in AC system, frequency is a free factor, meaning you can just increase it as much as you want or decrease it as much as you want. Now Faraday laws uh, basically defines this, this equation. Do not ask me this equation, I do not understand this. Uh, so there is a factor of time here, meaning how quickly it's changing. So if you can increase this factor, you can get more oomph out of same numbers of coils, meaning same uh, instead of like let's say 100 turns, you can get the same work done in 10 turns only if you can increase the frequency because it goes into this system. Basically EMF force is directly proportional to uh, basically frequency. Now magnetic cores will shrink dramatically with the frequency, meaning if you want to deal with a system, AC system, let's say you want to step down power uh, for DC bus that needs around let's say one kilowatt, that transformer would be this big, bare minimum. 
or you can use high frequency and have like you know something that fits on top of a credit card again uh, it's a bit thicker than a credit card but the size is in the same basically it will fit inside a palm of hand how the heck that can that puppy can deal with one kilowatt it works in kilohertz frequency is like stupid high uh, so if you go in stupid high frequency you can shrink the transformers uh, requirement drastically that's the whole point of physics here voltage cannot be increased beyond a dielectric strength thermal uh, limitation limits your, your amp capacity the only thing you can increase is frequency and thankfully in faraday's laws there is a point of time vector there so you can utilize this time vector and make your transformer motors generator exponentially smaller not little bit smaller not 10 percent exponentially meaning you will be uh, talking in terms of multiplication like five times smaller ten times smaller so that's the physics aspect of it but there are no free lunches in this universe so there is a penalty that penalty first penalty is skin effect meaning if you have to transmit this puppy to any distance let's say like even um, let's say if you're talking about like a, let's say a big school building forget about it because skin effect will literally make your conductor useless so this is the conductor diameter you send dc through it it works don't think too much about it you send ac through it it does not work the core of that is missing now how big of an area it will not use is directly proportional to frequency higher the frequency the bigger the area in the center it will not use a skin effect it's inversionally proportional to frequency higher the frequency the thinner the skin gets meaning you can literally have a giant thick conductor and just like dude i'm gonna transmit megawatts of high frequency power in there it's like it will melt it's like how like it will only transmitting on the skin so that's why you cannot use it and that's why we do not use even low frequency ac as in like 50 hertz or 60 hertz for long range power transmission the moment you go to any power companies like hey we want to transmit power to let's say 800 kilometers or 80 kilometers under water they're like dude you can't use it ac you have to use dc so that's why we have high voltage dc systems the moment you cross 1000 kilometer you have to use dc the moment you cross around 80 kilometers underwater you have to use dc because AC skin effect, in a, in like think of this, your conductor, you are not using the conductor. So fundamentally that creates a limit and it becomes worse the higher the frequency. So if you want to increase from 50 to 60 hertz to let's say 100 or 200 or 400, at that point in time your skin it will become very thin. And that's why if you ever had a luxury of tearing apart an induction cooker, you will notice the induction coils, they're very thin. They're made out of very thin matter, especially in induction, uh, induction wireless charging. The coils are made very, very thin, it's almost like hair like thin. Why? skin effect would make it useless even if you use a thick conductor so skin effects become uh, you know brutal and then you may be like okay rpm will go up because again frequency is directly proportional to rpm what if you increase the pole count meaning uh, normal uh, induction motors could be around let's say two pole or four pole generally these are the most common one six pole bit more oomph eight pole you will rarely find it in industry you will find it it's just not something that you go like hey bro eight pole it's not something like that so 10 pole 12 pole you can go that here's the you have to increase to ludicrous level meaning almost 14 pole in order to achieve rpm that you can directly couple and at that point in time your motor will be big simply because again there is a physical limitation of how the heck you're gonna manufacture the motor it's not just like okay on mathematics on paper i can just make thin enough I have dielectric strength enough I have enough thermal conduction so it will not melt all that it's a different thing to do it in physical reality so in physical reality there is a limit how much poles you can add so generally most ev vehicles are limited to around eight pole again it can be made bigger in some scenarios they prefer to make it bigger but you get that point like there is a certain limitation you cannot just go yolo on it and if you keep uh, increasing the poles you have to deal with the fact that your shaft will become very thick and very heavy because your torque requires it Again, even if you somehow you can manufacture it, let's say you use some 3D printer, uh, printing manufacturing technology that allows you to make really good stator, like really freaking good stator that would have, let's say 14 poles and you can achieve like really good density, awesome. But then how the hell are you gonna deal with uh, the torque requirement? You can't use the small splindly shaft that you see in other motors because it will, it will break. The moment you uh, give that much horsepower, let's say 500 horsepower, it will happen so you need a thick shaft to handle it and that's why whenever you are uh, dealing with electric vehicle you will always find they have multiple steps to reduce the rpm they will have one small that will spin a big one that will spin a big one and that will be a giant one then it will drive your wheels because you need very uh, serious amount of step down because again you cannot put 20,000 rpm into road wheels the diameter of road wheel at 20,000 rpm yeah it will go to ludicrous velocity and assuming it will last long enough it will not so you need to deal with high rpm that's the penalty of going high frequency or sometimes you can simply figure out how to direct drive everything meaning if you re engineer let's say your wheel size you decided hey i need to direct drive it what if i make the wheel smaller like f1 kind of small 
like in terms of diameter very small uh, so then you can deal with it or in some cases like uh, aircraft industry was like hey i need high frequency so what if i just design the fan to work at that sort of rpm the propeller blades itself to work at those rpm and uh, the final nail in the coffin is that expensive fine-tuned bearings and now to give you a context of that uh, basically Tesla model, uh, the motors they are using, the RPM is so goddamn high that the company SK Hynix, I think, is the company that is giving them bearings and they are like, yeah, this bearing is not designed for this RPM. like, then why they are using it? Well, almost no other options exist and not to mention at that temperature, there is one option that you can oil cool it continuously, that will allow you to run that. That's how all the jet engines survive uh, because again, jet engine RPM is already stupid. So they also need that continuous oil uh, injection in order to keep them cool otherwise they will simply self-destruct so that's the penalty that you deal with when you are talking about high frequency so we come to one of the common high frequency domain that we use is 400 hertz this became uh, very popular around 17 and 80s uh, because aircraft industry was starting to grow and people realized that one of the biggest penalty you have in aircraft is weight but you need a lot of electrical power in aircraft for lights for radios for instrumentation and everything else you need a lot of electrical oomph so how the heck you get that kind of power there you can put a big generator but here's the your payload will be compromised so they figured it out that once jet engine became a thing it's like it already has high rpm so what if we put high frequency generator on top of it and that created this idea of 400 hertz now why only 400 not 500 or three? it's always like you know balancing act yeah we were planning to make big planes so at some point somebody was thinking about it's like if you made very high frequency you could literally have a scenario where it's like uh, nose gear may not receive the electrical power if the engine is creating very very high frequency ac the skin effect capacitance loss will literally um, make wiring a hassle so 400 was a good compromise. It was not like too high nor too low. And uh, benefit was done that once engineering was sorted, it's like 400 hertz, that's it. Majority of the engineering firms that were building, uh, you know, equipments for it achieved 10x smaller size. Meaning if you take this puppy and you think, uh, if it's meant for 50 or 60 hertz, it would be, let's say, uh, one kilowatt, this puppy would be 10 kilowatt. This puppy would be 50 kilowatts. So very tiny things could have enormous amount of power and all the fans all the blowers all the compressors everything they had to do they flat out designed in such a way that directly uses that rpm and back in the old days when gyroscopes were physical things that were spinning they actually liked that idea like having high frequency uh, gyroscopes love high rpm too for stability reasons so it became a whole ecosystem that became self-sufficient and nowadays if you go into a very high quality airport you will find that the moment airplane talks somebody comes in yoinks power supply into it the reason for that is like um, aircrafts do not like to run their big engines they have to use the apu now apu is also a tiny jet engine again it consumes fuel which is expensive and it also has maintenance time on it meaning every 5000 hours or 7000 hours whatever x variable you have you have to send it for uh, refurbishment so what if you don't use it so aircraft, um, many airports will give you the facility is that the moment you come to the gates, we'll just yoink this puppy in and give you 400 hertz from our local source. What local source? Back in the old days, it was just like a giant induction motor driving, uh, you know, another uh, basically AC induction generator that was creating 400 hertz. It was like mechanical frequency converter we used to call it. So 50 hertz in, 60 hertz in and 400 hertz out. That was feeding the power into these things then uh, nowadays it's uh, much more common to see you will have uh, in remote location you may find a generator diesel generator that's sole purpose is to create 400 hertz uh, power uh, in other scenarios if you have good ac electricity you will be like just feed that uh, inverter like basically a vfd will convert it and then just feed it to airport so it's an ecosystem like if you want to understand 400 hertz there are a lot of supplier a lot of vendors everything is pre-done pre-built pre-sorted that's 400 hertz and then that's the aircraft finish, but you have to understand this became a thing that is used by everything. Why? Better silicon. The better silicon industry ever got, we figured out how to make cheap VFD. How cheap VFD? Back in the old days, VFD was a thing. People figured out that we can take AC, make it into DC, then make our desired AC out of it. It can be done. It's just that cost was stupid. So somehow, brick by brick, day by day, we improved our silicon technology. Now it's a common thing. Like my air condition has a stamp, that five star stamp, and it says variable frequency. Yeah. So you can buy many air conditions that have variable frequency drive. Uh, again, what kind of RPM? That depends on the compressor design. If compressors love the high RPM, it will have stupid high RPM motor. 
to it. If the compressors are like, dude, I don't really like that high RPM. So the frequency would be done in opposite way. Hey, what if you run at half power for, let's say 50% of the cooling capacity, just run at half power. At that point in time, the VFD will be designed to go lower rather than higher than 50 Hertz. That's uh, very common in everything. Another aspect, SMPS, switch mode power supply. Uh, they use the similar principle. They take the AC, make it into DC, then make it into high frequency DC, uh, and then send it to transformers. Uh, basically, this is becoming an inductor system. And you can get a lot of power and efficiency, which sounds odd. It's like you are taking AC, making it into DC, then doing high frequency to it, then making another, uh, basically, DC rail out of it, then sending it out after filtering. Somehow, that is more efficient than just having a transformer. And yes, it is true. Back in the days, if you are remember the video game era, TV video game, like cassettes and all that jazz, they had to have transformers, uh, like tiny transformers, the power plugs. It was not very efficient. Nowadays, you can have something that is much lighter, much more power capable, much more efficient compared to that, simply because of high frequency switching. Then modern, uh, modern uh, motors are becoming more and more VFD driven in all aspects of life, be it refrigerator, be it air conditioner, be it washing machines. I provided the washing machine video down below. There was one individual somehow found the motor water, and the motors is from 10 hertz to 350 hertz. The RPM is stupid, but again, it's washing machine design, so spindle is very thin on the motor and it will drive generally will drive a giant flywheel that is on uh, back of a tub so i think the rpm step down would be enough but having that induction motor rather than universal motor that used to be there that's kind of awesome because they no longer have to deal with brushes the lifespan would be exponentially longer so again the vfd may die out but you do not have to touch the motor vfd could be a hot swappable part in an industrial case generally in a consumer electronic it will be used and throw part but in because industrial system that can be done so you can have 350 hertz commonly available like you may already have it you may not have noticed it then we come to ev industry this puppy it's 500 horsepower somehow you can carry 500 horsepower like this puppy makes f1 engine look like bitch please how the heck that happened this puppy goes to ludicrous uh, frequency around minimum 350 to 500 hertz and there are other companies that are achieving even bit higher than that but at that point in time, the pole count also starts to go because, again, there is a limit. Ideally, you never want to cross that 20,000 RPM. It's like, just, just no. Like, this puppy goes to around 17,919 RPM, and that translates to around 250 km per hour. That's from Tesla. I'll provide the video down below, please, to check it out. So that's the idea of it. That's why high frequency is becoming more and more integral to our day-to-day -day life, especially if you have an electric car or this, which guarantees you have it. All your mobile chargers have that. So this was the presentation on high frequency AC. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me your disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.